Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another Pivot Artist interview. This week we're talking to Abel Nash, Hopi artist, and we're very excited to talk to him um, about uh, a special board that has ended up in our collection. So thank you for joining us, Abel. Hi, thank you. Nice, nice to see you guys today. Yeah, we're happy to talk with you today. So I'm just gonna jump straight into questions. Um, how did you first join the Pivot Show? Um, well, I actually didn't know Alandis or Dwayne at all. Um, and I was just doing a lot of different styles of artwork. I mostly started doing um, uh, acrylic and uh, aerosol work. And my son and my nephew actually uh, were wanting skateboards. So I uh, did a skateboard for my son and for my nephew and then I posted them on Instagram. And that's when um, Landis and Dwayne seen my work there. So um, Dwayne was the one who contacted me and asked me if I was wanting to be willing to be a part of this um, deck show that they were doing. So I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's, it's different. I've never um, done anything like that. And the boards that I did for my son and my nephew were the very first two boards that I ever done. So I kind of just dived right in and um, I think for the first show I did like around seven boards. So wow, it, it was really cool because just I didn't know what I was doing or where I was going. And um, my style still wasn't really fully developed. I was still all over the place doing different, different things. So that's how I ended up getting to be a part of the Pivot Show. And jumping off that question, we've been asking everybody what pivot means to them. Well, I think for me, pivot is just um, being able to go back and forth um, different directions. And that's pretty much how it's been for me um, since um, probably my senior year of high school. I started actually um, as a volunteer at the local um, Hopi radio station, KUII. I was one of the, part of the first um, students from the high school that were actually um, invited to be a part of that program. So I started doing that, um, started learning production, um, doing things there, and then became the operations manager where I was in charge of a lot of the equipment. And anytime anything happened, I was there to um, get the um, station back on air if we, we went off and I did that for about three four years and I always wanted to go to culinary school so I ended up um, leaving the radio station went to Scottsdale enrolled in the um, uh, the Cordon Blue program in Scottsdale uh, finished there and then I started doing um, uh, cooking at a few different restaurants down in Scottsdale. And got to the point where I was working 15, 16 hour days. I was a manager at a couple of different places and it was getting a lot. It was hard to um, uh, do anything. Cause I mean, cooks, you're working the holidays, all the time, different things like that. So I never really had any time off. And so I started using um, my artwork as a way of um, releasing a lot of stress and getting back into that. And then things turned for me, I didn't want to be down there anymore. So I decided to move home and uh, be back out here. My cousins and my uh, uncles were working at our uh, plan home I bought Walpi on First Mesa, and so the tourists would come up, and we would um, sell our artwork there. And it just kind of blossomed from there. I told myself that um, I would give it two years if I couldn't get anywhere within the art world. Within those two years, I was going to get back into cooking, and I've pretty much just been doing artwork ever since. So, I mean, for me, I've been pivoting back and forth through my career and then also my style of work. So that, that's pretty much what it is for me. And 
so how did you first get into art? Were, were you doing it before like cooking school or things like that? Oh yeah, I mean, for me, art was always a part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a third generation artist. Um, my grandfather and my dad and my uncles are all kachina doll carvers. And uh, my great grandmother and my grandmother from my, mother, um, my father's side, they're both potters. So they made uh, pottery. And then I have a couple great uncles who did um, acrylic and uh, watercolor gouache paintings and things like that. So, I mean, just being part of the culture, Hopi, um, you have all this design work and symbolism and everything. So uh, we have the dances and come home and you start drawing what you saw, the dances, different kachinas or um, different designs. Uh, we always go on walks and hikes throughout um, the reservation here. So we see a lot of petroglyphs and pottery shards. So we're constantly, I was constantly asking what the meaning of a lot of the different designs were because uh, these uh, pottery shards and petroglyphs are hundreds of years old, but they're still being used today in the pottery and um, other types of artwork out here. So um, you kind of got into it a little bit, but we've been asking everyone also about why they think art or how art has been important to them during this kind of crazy time period dealing with the pandemic and all the other social and economic stuff going on. And so do you still feel like art is kind of a stress relief for you? Um, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's for me, the way I um, look at my art is a way of healing. And um, for me, it's um, pretty much uh, prayers for good health and life, all the meanings and symbols behind all of the um, artwork that I do, the pottery designs and things like that. They're having to do with um, life, whether it be um, food, like corn, different types of wild um, plants that we um, use to eat or to um, use in the artwork, like the dyes that they make or the paints mm -hmm. that they use minerals, things like that. And so for me, a lot of like my more recent work, like the watercolor work, uh, has a lot of um, pottery designs in it. And that's um, like a visual prayer for me. So it's, it's constantly thinking about this world uh, for, uh, for me. Um, when hope you pray we're not just praying for ourselves but we're praying for the entire world for every uh, living thing out there because everything needs to be in balance for the world to work so um, a lot of designs are prayer for theirs and clouds and rain and cornfields and different animals that help us um, so artwork is always a way of healing for everybody i think even even if you're not um designing or creating anything but you're like like the um uh, coloring pages mm -hmm. that i um created um people are still have lots of talent and that coloring um the, the design the designs that i did and so it's really awesome because we have the um, co coloring contest with those pages and a lot of the work is just like, wow, like I wouldn't have ever thought of coloring it or um, doing it the way a lot of these different um, people did. So that actually is pretty cool to see their own creativity that they put into the um, coloring pages. Right, because you wouldn't think that there could be as much, you know, differentiation and deviation from like your original piece. But when I was putting together the feature that we did for you, I just kept coming across all of the different ones that people had designed. And it's amazing how different they are. So you're right, like being able to use your inspiration and work from that and see like, you know, these are ways that people can find stress relief or centering or grounding during these times too. So. 
You kind of spoke to this before, but maybe we'll have you speak to it more directly. But what does it mean to be a Native artist to you? And how does that influence your work? Um, for me, it, it's, I, I, I don't really, I don't know, because it's, it's for me, Native artists, that's who I am. I mean, I'm Native, Indigenous. But um, I guess for me, looking at it that way too is um, being able to share and um, teach people about my culture and uh, a lot of the different meanings and symbols behind the um, work that I do. And so um, there's a lot of people out there that still don't realize that there's a lot of native indigenous people out there and so um you're able to share that with them and we have a lot of tourists that come out here to where i live from all over the world from italy spain um, germany austria uh, different places and they sometimes don't realize that all natives are different and that we're not just one one um, one group but there's all different versions of um, native people out there so that's that's really um, nice to um, teach people about um, being Hopi or um, giving them information about other tribes and what they do because a lot of the people from around the world they just know natives from movies or tv and things like that they've seen so that i think uh for me being a native artist is being able to share um, my culture and uh, the meanings behind all my work with everybody the pivot exhibit really captures that so well there's such a variety of artists and even just within like hopi artists like you and Dwayne, you're not doing the same thing and so it's just, there's so much variety in, in bringing that contemporary indigenous voice. That's mm -hmm. the great thing about this exhibit. That's why we're really excited to share it. Yeah, that's the one thing I like about um, this show is um, like you said, me and Duane, we have two different styles. And a lot of it too is because um, I focus more on pottery designs and things like that. Uh, just because you don't see a lot of designs being the main focal point of a piece. Uh, they're incorporated here and there, but for the majority of um, Hopi work, it's mostly the kachinas or landscapes and things like that. But um, being uh, related to a lot of uh, pottery makers, um, there's a lot of them from my uh, mother's side that are pottery makers as well. And my, my dad's side, my great grandmother and my grandmother both doing pottery and then learning what those um, symbols and designs mean plus all the other ladies and other um, people that are doing um, pottery work um, for the most part pottery is more of a um, female type of um, work they do pottery and baskets and the men are the ones that do the weaving and uh, kachina dolls but um, I'm able to incorporate those different symbols and make them the main focal point of my work and be able to share a lot of that um, with a lot more people out there. All right, so it's our last question and you sort of led us right into things. Um, so I think, was it last year or the year before our director, Shelby Tisdale, she uh, met you, I think, at Indian Market in Santa Fe. And uh, yes. she was really captivated by your work. And with the Pivot exhibit coming, she um, wanted to donate. She donated some funding to purchase one of your boards for our collection. And so we're really excited to have added spider stories uh, to, to our collection. And we just kind of wanted maybe for you to talk about the meanings of some of that stuff. So let me bring up um, a picture. All right. So with the spider in the center, that's the 
that's the piece um, in our collection then. Yeah, that one's um, Spider Story, I believe is what I titled that. It's um, kind of hard for me to title a lot of my work because a lot of the times I don't really have any real, um, any way that I'm gonna be going in a certain direction. I mean, I just usually just throw whatever comes to me at the time onto onto um, canvas or a board or whatever but that one I actually uh, decided to come up with a name and uh, the spider in the middle it represents spider grandmother um, she's kind of like the, a guide for everyone um, and uh, in a way for me I get I guess the way I kind of look at her is she's kind of like your conscience she'll guide you in the right direction and tell you what needs to be done. And then the two um, faces that are on the top and the bottom are the uh, twin warrior brothers, the, the Gung Hoyas. And um, there's a lot of different stories about about them. Um, one of the, the stories is that um, these two brothers are full of energy. They're constantly getting into all kind of stuff, running all over the place. And I guess one day, uh, Grandmother Spider kind of got tired of them jumping around and everything. So they're like, here, <laughs> gave them the stickball game. I was like, here, go outside and play. And at that time, the earth was still flat. So um, these two brothers are running. They're so full of energy that as they were running and jumping, they were... Um, leaving footprints in the earth and they would run so fast and stop and instead of stopping instantly they would slide and push up the earth and that's what started kind of like creating the landscape we created the um, mountains and hills by their footsteps stopping and then jumping real hard they were making big valleys um, creating lakes and things like that and so um there's a lot of different stories about those two brothers that are constantly doing different things um, throughout um, the land. And then a lot of the um, design work around it is just having to do with um, prayers for a good life. Like you have clouds, um, prayer feathers, corn fields, uh, corn kernels, um, there's butterflies and other um, other different things in there but um, a lot of the work is um, I guess kind of like puzzle work I, I, I like a lot of puzzles and stuff and that's what why I really like pottery work because I can um, change different things designs I can turn them different ways and make them into different things like a lot of the birds so like if you see on the second board with the um, the centerpiece those um, the top half is the um, a eagle's head with his wing coming out and then a yellow um, cloud design to the left and then if below that will be a hawk design you can see his beak kind of hooking up from the bottom and then his tail feathers towards the end and then his wings extended out towards the right side and then the um, faces on the first board are having to do with the um, with nature. So you have the sun face that's in the lower right hand corner. Above that is the Hahai Wiki. She's the mother of all the Kachinas, also known as Mother Earth. Then you have another blue face to the left with the red um, circle on the cheek. That's a cloud spirit face. And then you also have the face directly below that, which is a Balak Muna face representing the um, butterfly maiden, um, having to do with uh, pollination and beauty. And then you have that clear path um, straight up the middle um, with all the different designs on the other sides, um, just asking for a good, look, good long life so you have all different types of things and then the other 
board on the very far right hand side those are cloud spirits on the top and bottom so you could see the red yellow and blue cloud design on the forehead and then you have the full face that's blue with the um, red on the cheeks and then you have the full pollock on the face there in the center with the clouds on top of their head as well and all these boards are actually all are um, done with watercolor mm -hmm. um, last year at uh, Diné College when we did the pivot show there that was the very first time I ever decided to do watercolor on on boards and that was crazy because I'm I'm a really bad um, procrastinator I do everything last minute and so I think I had like maybe three days before they were due and I finally decided oh, to work on those boards uh, on a, I think I did three of them total and I was like how am I gonna do this I sanded the boards down I tried going over with watercolor but the color just wasn't sticking um, the colors were pulling up into big areas that I didn't like the look of it and then I ended up finding some gesso that was able to absorb the absorb the color and then I tried putting the other colors on top and they just all started blending together so I'm like oh man what am I gonna do so I ended up finding a, um, a matte spray so I did the bottom color did matte spray on top, draw out my design, and then I colored everything in. And then I actually used the uh, clear satin finish on top to seal everything. So everything, I did maybe around three or four coats, but everything um, is set pretty well. And I really like the way they turned out. They were, uh, they actually look like they're um, burned in the design mm -hmm. with like a wood burner or something. They actually look like really like kind of aged and old too like they like they've been around for a long time so it was I really like the way they turned out sometimes procrastination pays off yeah. I guess oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, th I think that's what helps me work the most is when I'm under a, a lot of pressure that's a because deadline. <laughs> it, it it makes me work harder to try to get things right because I don't like to put something out that isn't up to my standards either and if I have so much time to work on something I'm like ah I'll get it done and then it takes me like I can work on a piece sometimes for like maybe a couple of weeks and then I have to finish it if not then I'll never finish it so I yeah I have to work like right like a couple of days before it's ready our needs to be done, then I'll get on top of it. And that's when a lot of my breast work comes out, I think. It's interesting that you mentioned them kind of being like puzzles because I think, and hopefully when people are able to see them in person, they'll see just how much you were able to fit onto just this, the size of that board because there's so much, you know, packed onto just a tiny space and the designs are just immaculate, so. Yeah. Really hoping that we can get you to campus at some point and get people in to see the exhibit. And I think they'll be really blown away by what you produce. Yeah. Um, one of my goals here is to still go like half the size of that design. So That's amazing. It, 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 I think if I, if I get enough time, eventually I'll maybe scale it down, like maybe a, another half or maybe three quarters of the way down so i it's just a child personal challenge that i want to do this to get in there with like um, some micro pens and do some yeah, like tiny, crazy tiny. crazy detail work and get as awesome. tiny as i can yeah well thanks for chatting with us today um thanks for you know the time and thanks to our viewers for watching this we also want to give a shout out to the lpa donors and to all of our crowdfunding donors who helped us financially to get pivot to the Center of Southwest Studies at Fort Lewis College. Um, you can follow Abel on Instagram at Abel Nash Art. See all of the 
phases of his work and hopefully we can see those tiny, tiny designs that he's able to make in the future. Um, you can follow us at the Center of Southwest Studies on Instagram and Facebook at Center SW Studies FLC. Um, follow the Pivot Instagram page at pivot underscore skateboard underscore deck underscore exhibit. I think I got that right um, for all things Pivot. And yeah, we just want to say thanks for joining us again. And we're really excited to have you in our collection too. Yes, thank, thank you. you yeah, it was really, really fun doing this interview with you guys.